We reflected on the foundation that God made in Holy Scripture and how we can apply all of that to the beauty of Our Lady and the foundation He made for Our Lady in the work of in that in that history, that work of salvation. <coughs> These last few nights, we've been gathering, uh, we've we've been arriving at kind of focusing on sin and then looking at Our Lady's interventions, how she wants to remedy that sin through the work and devotion to her Immaculate Heart. Why we arrived at the Immaculate Conception so late. We arrived so late because the world started to fall apart so badly. Those words of St. Paul that we read from First and Second Timothy seem to have come to us today. So a world immersed in sin, God had a plan, and the plan... Um, he didn't just send Our Lady once or twice, but multiple times to promote devotion and insist on this devotion to our Immaculate Heart, and we're still there. We haven't really responded fully, and that's obvious because communism is everywhere. Find a place where it's not right now. We haven't heeded the call to the Immaculate Heart yet. But in heeding that, we talked about last night devotion, and I brought, I brought attention to the fact that devotion uh, to, to Our Lady, it's not so much handing out prayer cards and telling people, um, you know, just, just to make their, their Saturday devotions. These things are very, very important. But let's look at what Our Lady says when it comes to her apparitions. In her apparitions, you hear certain things over and over again, like, you need to suffer and sacrifice yourself for my Immaculate Heart. You need to pray the rosary. And then she'll say it over and over and over again. And yet we're hard-pressed sometimes to get one rosary in a day. We become soft. We live in a culture that's soft. We allow that to affect us and believe that things should be soft. These last couple of days, some of the difficult things we've said in these, these, little, these little reflections, we've actually posted. And in posting them, it's amazing to see what Catholics say about it. They can't stand to hear anything difficult. They think that heaven should just be opened up for everybody, has a right to go to heaven. Why is it that if everybody had a right to go to heaven, that Christ would have to come and suffer such a humiliating and painful death? That Our Lady would have to suffer everything until now, and she'd have to keep coming back, is that, as it were, prophet, is sharing in that, that prophetic role of our Lord and continuously warning us if it's so easy just to get into heaven. <clears throat> At Lord, she started by making such a beautiful request <clears throat> to St. Bernadette. Will you do me the kindness, Our Lady said, will you do me the kindness to come here every day for two weeks? Now, in what apparition has there ever happened when the person saw Our Lady, they didn't desire to die and go to heaven? I mean, it's happened maybe a couple times. But normally, they just want to die and go to heaven. They can't wait to see her again. They keep coming back to the same place. They're just waiting. And then when that day comes where she doesn't appear anymore, they can't, they, 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 they can't take it. And Our Lady just says, you're going to suffer a lot, but I'm going to be with you. I'll still be with you. So she still makes the request out of her great humility. Would you do me the kindness to come here every day for two weeks? And then she lets her know this. I do not promise to make you happy in this world, but in the next. I do not promise. We have to, this is what we have to run through our heads. I do not promise to make you happy in this life, but in the next. In the apparitions of Fatima, which we'll talk about here in a second, there's a certain, there's a certain point in the apparitions where one of the, one, of the, one of the poor ladies, some one of the poor ladies that was already coming and kind of participating there in the apparitions, she gave to Lucia this little bottle of cologne. And she said, would you, would, you, would you give this to Our Lady? Now for that poor peasant woman, that was probably very expensive. It was probably real expensive cologne. She thought, this is the best thing I can provide for Our Lady. She's royal. Our Lady just said this. That's okay. That's not needed for heaven. She wasn't trying to offend the, 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 the lady. But she's trying to bring the attention back to we don't need human respect. Heaven is an all-out, um, it's an all-out um, um, exertion of spiritual force to get there. 
And Our Lady wants us to see that. That means you're going to suffer in this life, but you'll be happy in the next. At the, it's interesting that in these apparitions where Our Lady is promoting the devotion to our Immaculate Heart, which we seem to think is a bubbly thing, it's nice. It's nice. We're devoted to Our Lady and her Immaculate Heart. In each one of these apparitions, Our Lady was sad. She would smile sometimes, but they all talk about how sad she was. And in the, in the, if you read the apparitions of Fatima, she smiled at them. But she was always very sad. At La Salette, she just wept the whole time. The whole time she wept. And then when she, she, she appeared to St. Bernadette, she was sad, but she would smile often. At La Salette, she didn't talk about her Immaculate Heart. At Lourdes, she said, I am the Immaculate. So you wonder if because Our Lady's on this She's, she's now going to reveal that she is the Immaculate. She's setting up everything for her. She's already been working. Um, Ruta Bach had already happened in 1830. Um, we already have the, the badge. We have Our Lady of Victory, the things we talked about last night. We have other things with the Immaculate Heart. Now she's coming to affirm the church that I am the Immaculate Conception. Is it because of this devotion to her Immaculate Heart that's going to be the salvation of men? She's able to smile more. She didn't cry. She, did, she wasn't weeping so much. She wasn't so sad. But she was sad. In the eighth apparition, remember there was 18, in the eighth apparition at, at Lourdes, St. Bernadette, it seemed, you know, there was already a group of ladies they were all forming out there. Not just ladies. I'm sure men were coming too. But people were coming to... Um, um, be there and assist at these apparitions, St. Bernadette was, was walking on her knees towards the bush. Remember, Our Lady would appear above the bush, the rosebud bush. And as she's, she's doing that, with every step, she prostrate herself. And then at one point, she stands up, she turns to the people, and she says, penitence, penitence, screaming at the people. And then she's called to kiss the ground, and then, th then there's the, the fountain there. That's why we friars, whenever we come into the chapel, we don't do it so much when there's people around, but we kiss the ground. Whenever we come in and out of the chapel, it's because of this. Penance. Our Lady wanted us to lower ourselves to the ground and do penance. On that apparition... On the, um, the apparition that took place on March 25th, the Annunciation, St. Bernadette had this uncontrollable urge to ask what Our Lady's name was. And she asked it the first time, and Our Lady smiled. She asked it a second time, and Our Lady smiled and wouldn't say anything. She asked it a third time, and this is what St. Bernadette wrote. Her face became very serious and she seemed to bow down in an attitude of humility. Then she joined her hands and raised them up to her breast. She looked up to heaven, then slowly opened her hands and leaned towards me. She said to me in a voice vibrating with emotion, I am the Immaculate Conception. How great is this mystery if Our Lady herself who's been the Immaculate Conception now for, you know, 2,000 years. That mystery alone made her voice vibrate with emotion. At Fatima, Our Lady asked a simple question. Do you wish to offer yourselves to God to endure all the sufferings that he has chosen to send you? That God has chosen to send you sufferings, you little children? As an act of reparation for the sins by which he's offended? Men, grown men offend God. And God wants little children to make reparation? That's not the God I know. We'll publish this somewhere, and that's what people will write. That's not the God I know. 
Well, you follow the God you know, and we'll see if you get there. This is Our Lady saying this. By the sins which he's offended, and so to ask for the conversion of sinners, they all responded yes. Then, Our Lady said, you will have much to suffer. She sends the little children. You will have much to suffer. But the grace of God will assist you and always bear you up. There was a great suffering for St. Lu- Lu- or for Lucia when she was told that Francesco and Jacinta would die. But not because they would die. Because she didn't get to die. She was going to be left alone on earth. The other two were happy. They get to die. <laughs> That's what happens when you see Our Lady. You just want to die and go to heaven. Remember Claude Neumann? Newman? Remember he was supposed to be executed? He, would, he was converted by Our Lady. When the stay of execution came, he wept. Why would God do this to me? If you saw her, he said, you'd want to die too. Our Lady said this to Lucia when she showed how sad she was that she had to stay alone. Am I to stay here alone, she said? Our Lady said, no, my child. You are suffering very much, but do not be discouraged. These words are for us too. Do not be discouraged. I will never leave you. My immaculate heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. In June, she said this to these little children, sacrifice yourselves for sinners. Our Lady knows what a sacrifice is. She stood at Calvary. What do you think she's asking of these children? Sacrifice yourself for sinners. And say many times, especially when you make any sacrifice, oh Jesus, it is for your love, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We too have to remember these words, and I, I confess I forget to say these often. need to put them in our prayer card, stick them in our pocket, and pull them out whenever we have to do something difficult. After seeing hell, which even to this day, if you talk to children about how Our Lady showed them hell, the adults will protect the children and pull them out of the, the class when you're talking. And Our Lady did this with children. You've seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, our Lord wishes to establish throughout the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If people will do what I tell, what I tell you, many souls will be saved, and there will be peace in the world. And what did she tell us to do? She said over and over again to pray the rosary, at least once a day, but then later on you hear her say, pray it always. Pray the rosary always. But yet, you get in the car and you listen to the radio. You take those phones of yours and you just put on all this other stuff to listen to, to watch, to do. She said to pray the rosary and to sacrifice yourselves. It's interesting that Lucia, if you remember, she would ask often Our Lady for the healing of certain people. And still today, people go nuts over asking healings. You know, everybody wants to be healed of everything, all the, all the physical infirmities. And, you know, it, 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 it brings a lot of pain and difficulty and, and people want to... But Lucia, she kept asking this. Would you, this person, will you heal this person? Our Lady, she responds this way, bringing the attention to the supernatural and the spiritual rather, rather than uh, the physical and uh, the things here on earth. Because physical ailments do, do much good for us. She says, pray. Pray a, a great deal and make sacrifices for sinners. For many souls go to hell because they have no one to sacrifice and pray for them. That's her response to asking for physical healings. 
We know Our Lady wants to heal people physically. That's what she does at Lourdes. But she more wants to heal the body. I'm sorry, she wants to heal the soul more than she wants to heal the body. What does it matter if you spend 80 years in great torment in your body and you get heaven? Eternity in heaven? It was, like a, it, was like a, it was just like a blink of the eye you suffered. The essence of the message was this. Men must, uh, men must offend our Lord no more. And they must ask pardon for their sins. For he is already much offended. What about now? When we let, when we, when we let children decide? I don't even want to go into it. Anyways, we know of all the per perversions of our day. And when she got done saying these words, they actually quoted, they, 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 um, they remembered the, that when she left, they, they talked about how sad she looked when she made this comment. Men must, must offend our Lord no more. And they must ask pardon for their sins for he is already much offended. The only time Our Lady gets sad is when there's sin. You want to make Our Lady sad? This is why we really have to enter into real examinations of conscience and actually make repent from our sins and stop doing things. We don't just keep going back to confession every week and saying the exact same things. We have to eliminate it and fight to eliminate it. And if we did, we'd become holy. And if we became holy, things would change. When they were going around asking at the very first apparition, they were asking Our Lady, is, am I going to go to heaven? This is what Lucia says. This is exactly what it, it seems like such a stupid thing. Come on, you're, you're, they're with Our Lady. Stop thinking about yourself. It's exactly what she should be asking. Am I going to go to heaven? Yes. Is uh, Jacinta going to go to heaven? Yes. Is Francesco going to go to heaven? And she looked at him. And she pondered it for a minute. And this is what, they, they, this is what a, a good priest named Father uh, John de, de Marchi, he wrote on, on, the Immaculate, uh, on the Immaculate Heart of Mary in a book called The Immaculate Heart of Mary. Our Lady beautifully and compassionately glant... Um, um, but it was said that Our Lady uh, beautifully and compassionately uh, rested her glance on him for a little while, on Francesco. For reasons we are not qualified to fathom, he says, it held a shade of sadness and disapproval. Somewhere in this, his little heart, the Lady must have read a fault that others could not see. Jacinta, or uh, Francesco, that sweet little Francesco. If Our Lady looked at him that way and thought that about him, what's she thinking about you? That's for all of us to reflect. Like, wh what am I doing every day? And why, why don't I stop doing this? There's real consequences of this. Breaking the Immaculate Heart of Mary is the consequence of it. She said, oh, he, he too, but first he must say many rosaries. And he responded. Afterwards, they were playing. After, the appar after that, that apparition, they were outside, not playing. They were quite serious at that point, but they did discuss the thing while they were still tending to their sheep. They rested in ecstasy for a while. They didn't want to move after the apparition. They just prayed in silence. And once they had to go back to their duties, they were talking about what happened, and finally Francesco, who couldn't, he couldn't hear anything, he was asking about it, and they, and they told her, and they told him, and he just said this. He burst out, they said, and just said, Oh, my lady, I will say all the rosaries you want. And he did. We don't have to wait and try to just apply this to Francesco. We have to apply it to us. The only fear that Jacinta had was dying alone. What did Our Lady ask her to do? The only thing she was afraid to do 
Your mother's going to take you to the hospital. She's going to leave you there. Lucia's not even going to be able to visit you, and you're going to die there. The only thing she was afraid of, that's what the Blessed Virgin asked. And she wanted to do it. Francesco wanted so much to console the hearts of Jesus and Mary. And Jacinta wanted to save everybody from hell. In another apparition, just five miles outside of the border of France in Belgium, And uh, it's, it, it's called Our Lady of Boran, or, or the Our Lady of the, the Golden Heart. It's a small little town. It used to have a very staunch Catholic population before this apparition. I forget what year. It's like 1930 or something like that, maybe 1940. I can't remember right now. And they'd basically become Marxists. Well, all this other stuff had been happening in France, and so the message was already related or relayed. And so Our Lady goes there and just appears. And she says almost nothing. But she starts appearing and people start coming. Just these children. There's five children. They were actually being mischievous. They were going around ringing doorbells. And Our Lady told them very few things. I am the Immaculate Conception. She said, pray, pray very much. And she said, I will convert sinners. There might be a few other things, but they're, they're not of great necessity for us here. One of the last things she said to, to each one of the five children, she said something to them before she parted, departed and would never see them again. Well, they would never see her again until, you know. In the final vision, she said to um, Fernanda, or Fernande, I think it's, it's a woman, it's a girl, one of the children, do you love me? It must be a boy. It says, do you love me, my son? And he replied, Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She said, Our Lady said to uh, Fernanda, it's a, it's a girl, do you love my son? And she replied, yes. Do you love me? Yes. Then Our Lady said this, and this is for all of us. Then sacrifice yourself for me. Sacrifice yourself for me. And then she bade farewell, and they didn't see her again. Here in a few minutes, after the rosary, we're going to make our consecration to the Immaculate Virgin again. Two years ago, when we, when we did these talks, we did a preparation, nine-day preparation. Those can still be found on the website for, um, for, uh, a prep, for a type of preparation for the con, uh, consecration of St. Maximilian, Maximilian Colby to Our Lady. I'm just going to read through the prayer again and do a little bit of commentary. O oh, Immaculate, Queen of heaven and earth, refuge of sinners and our most loving mother, God has willed to entrust the entire order of mercy to you. I, a repentant sinner, a repentant sinner, that brings joy to Our Lady's heart. She tells us to repent. A repentant sinner, pray for sinners. I, a repentant sinner, cast myself at your feet imploring you, humbly imploring you to take me with all that I am and have. Total offering, holy to yourself as your possession and property. Please make of me of all my powers of soul and body, of my whole life, my whole death, and my whole eternity. Whatever most pleases you. These aren't words to be said. They're words to be lived. We have to meditate on these words and offer ourselves to her. When we find ourselves complaining about difficulties that we face in the world, we have to ask the question, is this against my consecration? Or is it just some silly devotion that I have? Consecration of the Immaculate Virgin, according to the method of St. Maximilian Kolbe, is like an active living of your confirmation grace. Confirmation is to make you a soldier of Christ where you're ready to die. Shed your blood at any moment. Our consecration to the Blessed Virgin is that. We want to be ready to die and shed our blood at any moment. 
But like I talked about last night, the martyrdom that we're being given is not most likely going to be a martyrdom of blood. It's going to be a long, drawn-out, difficult humiliation if you cooperate. And we should rejoice in that because it makes heaven worth it. You get there, you're not going to be embarrassed. Oh, I didn't do anything to merit this. If you live, if you live the life, your whole life, death and eternity, and whatever most pleases her, you're going to be a living sacrifice, just like her son. And there's nothing she's going to ask of you that you can say, this is against my consecration. Remember last night? We need to, we need to live unto failure by risking for our Lord. That is risking to do what's right. Because today, when you want to do what's right, it means you're going to lose things that you think are good. If it pleases you, use all that I am and have without reserve, no matter if I kick and scream and don't want you to do it, without reserve, wholly to accomplish what has been said of you, she will crush your head, and you alone have destroyed all heresies in the whole world. Let me be a fit instrument in your immaculate and most merciful hands. This is a difference between the consecration of St. Louis de Montfort and St. Maximilian Kolbe. It's a difference between the doctrine of the times. St. Maximilian Kolbe is dealing with the Franciscan dogma of the Immaculate Conception. That means to be at enmity with Satan. Our Lady is that instrument of God to crush Satan in the world. We ask to be instruments in her hands to do that. That means we have to make ourselves at enmity. We have to remain at enmity. And we have to be willing to face the difficulty of being the target of the one she's at enmity with. For introducing and increasing your glory to the maximum in all the many, in all, all the many strayed and different souls. And thus help extend as far as possible the blessed kingdom of the most sacred heart of Jesus. There's another apparition that I didn't relate here, but it has to do with a scapular. It's also there. I think it's in Belgium. It's a scapular with uh, uh, the Sacred Heart on it. And Our Lady said, this is the devotion that most pleases me. Devotion to the Sacred Heart of her Son. For wherever you enter, you obtain the grace of conversion and sanctification, not just for us, Marian consecration has always been known as a personal sanctification. This, you're offering yourself to Our Lady. You're offering everything to her without reserve for your sanctification, however she chooses it, and for the sanctification of as many souls as possible. Remember the cure of ours. The devil said if there were four more like him, like all of France would be saved. How many souls were attached to him? St. Pio that great work of, he worked as a co-redemptrix. He assisted in the redemption under Our Lady. In doing that, how many souls were attached to him that he had to save? That's why he got beat with a curtain rod by Satan and God allowed it. He had to save souls. And all the many hours that both of those great saints spent in the confessional, we too have to save souls. Every baptized soul has so many attached to them. And if we're not holy, you can't do it. Since it is through your hands that all graces come to us from the sacred heart of Jesus, allow me to praise you, O most holy virgin. Give me strength against your enemies. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee and for all who do not have recourse to Thee, especially for the enemies of the Holy Church and those recommended to Thee. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.